insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 121 feeling like a burden. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my compassionate and caring co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How you doing today, Maddie? I'm all right. How about you? I'm doing okay. How was your uh, week so far this week? Not too bad. Um, I'm finally out of band camp, which is nice. You know, not too bad is pretty good considering you had a dentist appointment and an orthodontist appointment this week. Well, at least they weren't on the same day like the last time. That's true. But that, you know, having a a week that's not so bad just goes to show you how tough band camp was last week. Yeah. Compared to last week, I kind of prefer this week. Even having to go to the orthodontist and dentist wasn't as bad. Hey, but you know what? You survived it. You came out stronger. You said the conditioning worked. You are able to do... Some of the routines now a little bit easier, so I I think mission accomplished, right? Yeah. So this week we are talking about being a burden. This was another topic that you had uh, come up with and did the research for. So situations, emotions, and hormones often combine in our teens to make them feel like a burden on those around them, or at least what they, that's what they perceive. Mm. We'll explore explore why this happens, some of the things that can cause this. And finally, we'll look at ways to help our teens combat this. But before we do that, I would invite our audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of all the network's podcasts can be found listed as Insights into Things. And we're available anywhere you can get a podcast. Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, etc., etc. I would also invite our audience to give us some feedback right in. Reach out. Uh, we'd love to get suggestions for show topics. Um, love to get feedback on how we're doing. You can email us at comments at insights into things.com. On Twitter, you can get us at insights underscore things. We're at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Or we're on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things. Or you can get links to all those and more on our website at insightsintothings.com. Are we ready? Sure. All right. So why do people feel like a burden? So this research came from the bellfoundation.org.au, another one of our Australian sources. We used one of those last week as well. More often than not, feeling like a burden is tied to other issues, such as self-esteem, depression, guilt, or other feelings that are overwhelming for us to handle. We, in turn, believe that if those feelings are an overwhelming burden on us, then it makes us an overwhelming burden on others. Feeling like a burden is usually a symptom of a larger problem, not the root cause of the problem itself. Determining the reason for feeling like a burden is the key to addressing the root cause of the issues we may face. Many people that go through an episode of depression feel like a burden to others. Often, individuals who live with depression struggle with feelings of guilt. It seems to be linked intrinsically with depression and how someone with this illness perceives themselves. They may express how they feel worthless or a burden to the people that are caring for them. Often as carers, we find ourselves saying, there is nothing to feel guilty for. You can't help feeling ill. The individual may be aware of this, but they are unable to move past the negative thoughts they are experiencing. Being stuck in negative thinking is a major part of depression. 
Guilt is synonymous with mental ill health. People that are depressed may often feel they are undeserving of love and happiness. They may feel that they are taking away people's time and energy needlessly. It's important to understand that someone with depression doesn't want to feel guilty or a burden. They don't enjoy it or encourage it. There's a tremendous pressure on all of us in society to appear well and to not talk about negative feelings. When someone is depressed, this feeling is exacerbated, and they'll often hide how they truly feel from people that care about them. There's a real fear that they're burdening people around them with too great a responsibility. Depression causes people to self-destruct and to not seek help or support. They may push others away from them and damage relationships, sometimes irreparably. <clears throat> people with depression may also have had experiences when they have shared how they felt in the past. They may have opened up to someone they've trusted and that person hasn't been able to deal with it. They may have been met with silence or just simply ignored. This can damage future relationships and how much they trust other people to help them when they're ill. Someone with depression may be surrounded by genuine, caring individuals, but still struggle with trusting them. They might convince themselves that they'll be left alone, or what happened in the past may happen all over again. Feeling like a burden makes many people with depression stay silent. They may feel they're not worthy of help. They may feel they will just drag people down with them. It's important we make people feel that they are no that they no longer have to be silent. That's okay. That it's okay to tell people that they're unwell and struggling. They need to feel that when they do open up, they will be met with support. It's okay. It's also okay for people around them to say it is a struggle sometimes to support someone with depression. It's important for them to acknowledge that it's not easy, but that doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Seeing someone unwell is very difficult, especially when they are dealing with very negative thoughts. We want to help someone who is unwell and make them feel better. It isn't because we see someone as a burden. It's because as compassionate human beings, we want to help those who may be suffering. It may also be because we, want, we went through something similar and are grateful for those who helped us through it and want to continue that positive movement, movement by helping others. What we can do to help someone is to be there for them. We can listen and offer practical support. So this is kind of a heavy topic for today, wouldn't you say? Yeah, kind of. So let me ask, with... All that said and done, and that was a, a very detailed definition of what feeling like a burden kind of is and some of the things that it might stem from. Have you had feelings of, of being a burden on others? I mean, we've kind of mentioned the fact that I feel that I'm your little burden, basically. So, yeah, I'd say I've kind of felt like a burden to others. And what do you think that feeling stems from? Is it self-esteem issues? Is it depression? Is it just the general state of being a teenager dependent on other people? I think it's probably mostly related to my self-esteem. I know I don't really have depression and I don't really have, um, I don't really think it just stems from the fact that I'm still young and I like need your help because I have kind of been striving to be slightly more independent. Um, so I guess it kind of all ties back to my own self-esteem. Um, and I think a lot of it is kind of like when I get upset, I feel like I'm burdening you guys with my problems because you have to worry about taking care of me while also worrying about everything else. Um, and I've actually also kind of felt that way in marching band, sort of, because like, um, we've been talking about, like, how, um, everything I do, like, I have to, like, it's just me in a way. I, if I don't get my steps right, the form's not really gonna look right. So, um, if I do mess something up, or if I'm, if I feel too needy, um, with you or the people at Marching Band, I feel like I'm a burden. 
I understand. That makes sense. And from the marching band standpoint, you know, any this is the first time you've really been involved in a team event, a team participation. And if you look at it objectively, really, if anybody messes up their part, it has an effect. Yeah. So it, that doesn't single you out as a burden. It's your first year. So I could totally understand the overwhelming feeling of learning all this stuff that you've never been exposed to. Uh, but this is why you have mini camp and band camp and rehearsal. And, you know, the, the rest of the band understands that they were all first years at some point in time themselves. And they all went through it at the same time. Um, so I wouldn't, you know, I understand where it comes from. Uh, but if, if that becomes an overwhelming feeling, you probably should talk to the, the band director and kind of explain your feelings and, I'm sure they're very well equipped to, to deal with this because he's been doing it for a long time and you're not the first person to walk in with a lot of these feelings. Mm -hmm. um, as as an individual who has who suffers from depression myself, I've gone through the feelings, you know, those those deep lows emotionally where, you know, you do feel like a burden on the people around you and you feel like you don't want to bother other people when you know you're like, like I'm the type of person that when I go through these depressive periods, I know that I, I can logically acknowledge that my life is pretty good. You know, I have these issues that I go through that it's not, I lost my job or, or, uh, you know, a, a loved one passes away those things tend to not trigger depressive uh, episodes for me. They just sort of come out of the blue and you're overwhelmed by these feelings of depression and sadness and questioning self-worth. And, and I don't know where they come from. So I don't want to, I'm very hesitant to talk about things like that with other people because I, I don't know how to deal with them myself. And I don't want to, I'm overwhelmed by them and I don't want to overwhelm other people. So a lot of what they talk about here about keeping silent is, is very true. And the few times that I have actually gone out and, and talked to people, whether it's talking to, to mommy or, or when I would go through these periods and, and my mom was around and I would talk to her or if I've talked to counselors, that act of talking about it, because you're not looking for an answer. You're really not. It's not like you're going to someone and you'll tell them what the problem is and they'll give you an answer to it. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. But what it really is about is talking through what you're feeling and just having somebody to listen. And when you can talk those things and vocalize those things to someone else, it helps you to understand them a lot better. Even if the person on the other side doesn't say a word, like my mother very rarely said anything when I had these talks with her, but just the fact that she was listening and having that compassionate person to talk to about it was in itself uplifting. Um, so it, it is important to talk about these things when you, when you're feeling like a burden and by talking about them with other people, you're not burdening them with it. Yeah. Um, a lot of the problems that you're running into as a teen, you still have to deal with. So when I think of burdening someone in the literal sense, it's like giving them the problems and letting them solve them. But you're really not doing that, are you? Not really. No, you're, you're basically trying to figure out how to deal with them. And, and when you talk your way through it, it's kind of like when you talk to yourself, you know, if you're sitting there putting something together, you're doing a Lego project or you're trying to assemble furniture and you, you're reading the instructions and you start talking to yourself, that talking to yourself helps your brain to work a different way. You, you look at the problem from a different angle. So when you vocalize it, you're working different parts of your brain and it helps your brain to figure things out. So that's really what you're doing when you're discussing these feelings with someone. You're not putting the feelings on someone else. 
you're using that conversation to kind of rewire your thinking about those problems. And sometimes when you do that, it helps you to figure them out where you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Yeah. So, so don't ever hesitate to talk to mommy or I about any of these things. Uh, you know, we're here to help. That is, we joke around that you're our little burden, but as parents, we accept that. Yeah. And as parents, you know, we are responsible for you. We're responsible for your care. We're responsible for clothing you and feeding you. But we're equally as responsible for your your mental well-being as well. So, and mommy and daddy have both fully accepted that responsibility. So, don't ever think that you are burdening us when you want to talk about things like this. We're always here to, to listen. So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and talk about some of the reasons that people wind up feeling like a bird. We'll be right back. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're talking about feeling like a burden. And now we're going to be talking about the reasons behind people feeling like a burden. And uh, this research comes from a website called BetterHelp.com. So our feelings contribute to our reality. If you feel like a burden, you will have to work through your feelings to see your true worth. However, working through those feelings may not always seem easy, as it requires challenging your thoughts and facing your emotions. Here are a few reasons you may be feeling like a burden. And one of the main ones, um, the first one we have here, is low self-esteem and confidence. People who suffer from low self-esteem may believe that they aren't worth anything or are burdensome, especially if this is a belief that has been solidified over time. If you suffer from low self-esteem, it helps to remember that you can overcome that belief and work toward being more confident. For some, low self-esteem is something that is experienced on its own. For others, however, low self-esteem and self-confidence may be a symptom of a mental illness. Anxiety disorders are another reason you may feel like a burden. If you struggle with anxiety, you may be worried that your symptoms are troublesome to those around you or that people may leave you because of them. While these beliefs are not rooted in reality, they are very real to the person experiencing them, and such beliefs may worsen anxiety. However, worrying about what others think of you does not always signify an anxiety disorder. To help you better understand if you're dealing with anxiety, here's a list of symptoms associated with this category of mental illness. Feeling as though you're constantly on edge, Feeling fatigued and having difficulty concentrating or following through with tasks. Being irritable and angry. Experiencing muscle tension and random pain. Worrying frequently or having issues sleeping. Some anxiety disorders also include panic attacks, which can include symptoms such as heart palpitations, sweating, intense feelings of dread and fear, and shaking or trembling. If you believe that you have an anxiety disorder, you'll want to seek help from a licensed therapist. Therapy can help alleviate the symptoms of an anxiety disorder. 
It can also help you process the emotions associated with feeling like a burden. There's also depressive order disorders to worry about. Individuals suffering from depre- with depression may also feel like a burden. Depression is a mental disorder that affects mood and self-perception, which can lead you to believe negative things about yourself. Symptoms of depression include feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, and sadness or numbness, sleeping too little or too much, having little appetite or eating more than usual, which can be accompanied by weight loss or gain, feeling fatigued and lethargic, which can cause you to speak and move more slowly than usual, difficulty concentrating and maintaining focus, no desire for motivation... No desire or motivation to do daily tasks or engage in previously enjoyed activities. Agitation, anger, or irritation. And frequent thoughts of death or dying. If you are experiencing symptoms of depression, please seek help immediately. Especially if you're thinking about suicide or believe that you are at risk of harming yourself. And we we're also going to be providing the National Suicide Prevention Line, which is 1-800-273-8255. Just as anxiety or depression may contribute to feeling like a burden, so may other mental disorders, such as bipolar disorder or an eating disorder. And you do not have to have a mental disorder to feel like a burden. Dealing with a health issue that makes you rely on others can lead to the same thing. Whatever's causing you to feel this way, support is available. So, of those symptoms and of those contributing factors that we talked about, have you experienced any of these? And we can go down that list again. So, low self-esteem or confidence, is that something that's, that's ever been an issue for you? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Um, I've had issues recently with my self-esteem. For the most part, in some cases, it's pretty good. But in other cases, it's not so good. Okay. Uh, my inner critic is very... Let's say it gives... The worst side of criticism. You are very harsh on yourself. You're, you're probably your harshest critic, and I think we've established that over time. Yeah, so low self-esteem and confidence has probably been one of the biggest factors in me kind of believing that I'm somewhat of a burden to people, mainly because I don't really believe in myself. So what about anxiety disorder? So they, you've, you know... When we started this podcast, one of the very early episodes we talked about was anxiety. And it was something that you seemed to uh, show symptoms of. And But once we got kind of down deep into the weeds on it, um, I don't think we thought that you were. What do you think? I mean, do you, do you suffer from anxiety? Do you suffer from panic attacks or anything like that? Um, Are you placed in situations where you feel a great deal of anxiety? I mean, I definitely don't feel any of the extreme side effects that come with it, especially the physical ones. Um, It's just, on occasions, there are some times where I feel intense amounts of anxiety, and at points I don't really know how to deal with them. Okay. Now, do you feel overwhelmed under those situations? Most of the time, yeah. I definitely don't want to say that I, like, like it would be like panic attacks, but I would kind of be overcome from the anxiety and really wouldn't know how to deal with it. And what do you usually do in those situations? Uh, try distracting myself for the most part. I try... Okay, that's a valid technique. Yeah. Uh, I try think. I try thinking of something different. I try doing something different to get my mind off of it. Hopefully, you know, to kind of forget about it for a moment. And that kind of goes back to the mindful meditation we talked about a few podcasts back, where when you have those feelings, those thoughts that are overwhelming you, fill your brain with something else. Distract yourself away from it. 
you sometimes when you come back to look at what's causing that anxiety later after you've taken a break, sometimes it's not nearly as overwhelming as you originally thought it was. Yeah. How about depressive disorders? I know we did a podcast on depression as well, and we thought you were suffering from some of those symptoms. Do you get depressed? Uh, sometimes. Um, do you get depressed or do you get sad? There's a difference probably between Probably sad. And I think less. we all get sad. At, at, I mean, considering the world today, it's kind of hard not to get sad at times. Yeah. So... So you do experience some of these. Um, how do you think you handle these things overall? Do you feel you're more like a burden these days? Do you feel less like a burden these days? Do you feel like you're making progress? I've been trying to make progress. Um, I've started feeling a little less like a burden on you guys, probably because I've started becoming slightly more independent. Um, and... I've been somewhat able to deal with some of my emotions, but even at points I do have to come to you, and at those points I do sometimes feel like a burden. Um, but um, as for certain things like sleep, I've started getting a lot better. Um, I haven't really had too many issues sleeping recently, and um, when I do, I try not to bother you guys about it. And if it gets to a point where it is going to be a bit bad, then I do, then I will come to you right. just in case. So when you come, you say you, sometimes when you feel it gets to the point where you have to come to us, you feel like a burden. Is that because it's gotten to the point that you can't deal with it and you need help? Or is that because mom or daddy make you feel like a burden? Um, probably more this first option because, um, I know I can reside in you guys, um, and I personally don't really know how to deal with it, so I don't really know if I have an, any other choice other than just, you know, suffering through it, and I don't really want to have to deal with that. Sure, yeah. Okay, so we're going to take our last break here, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about some tips and tricks on how to stop feeling like a burden. We'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back. Today we're talking about teens and how people and teens feel like a burden. So now we're going to talk about how to stop feeling like a burden, you know, so things are good again. Yay. Mm -mm. We always try to end the show on a high note. Yeah. Now that we've reviewed some of the issues that may be causing your current state of mind... Let's take a look at some ways to overcome feeling like a burden to friends and family members. So first up, we have building up your self-esteem. One great way to start working toward a life in which you do not feel like you're burdening others is to build your self-esteem so you can recognize your value as a person. When we feel as though we have no value, it's hard to live our best lives. Fortunately, you can build your self-esteem up and become more confident about who you are. And here are a few ways to get started. Repeat positive affirmations and point out things you love about yourself. Create words of encouragement and kind reminders for yourself. Spend more time with the people who make you feel loved and appreciated. 
do things you excel at. Set achievable goals and tasks and complete them. Challenge negative thoughts when they appear and replace them with positive ones. Improve your current lifestyle by cultivating healthier habits. Refuse to compare yourself to others and focus only on your personal journey. Be kind to yourself and remember that no one is perfect. And finally, focus on your mental health and wellness. Improving your relationships is another technique to help deal with feeling like a burden. Sometimes we, all we need is one person's reassurance that we're not a burden. However, fear or uncertainty can prevent us from reaching out. To combat these feelings of low self-esteem, try expressing how you're feeling to those closest to you. Speak openly to those you trust and let them reassure you. Focus, too, on improving those relationships so that there's a greater trust and better communication. When you feel actively loved and appreciated by another person, you're less likely to feel like a burden. If you don't have someone you can trust to be open with, consider speaking with a licensed counselor. Um, and, the f and right now, the final one we have is getting help with mental illness. As we mentioned before, low self-esteem is a symptom of a number of mental disorders. If you are struggling with anxiety, depression, or, other men or another mental disorder, reaching out to a licensed therapist is an important first step. Therapy can help you cope with low self-esteem and other symptoms as well, so you can live the best life possible. When we think of therapy, we usually think of in-person sessions in an office at a nearby location. However, especially when you aren't feeling great, there are times when it's difficult to attend in-person therapy. This is where online counseling comes in. Feeling like a burden can greatly impact your self-perception and mental health. However, these feelings are rarely justified or true. If you're feeling like a burden to those around you, Therapy can help you understand just how worthy and loved you truly are. So with that in mind, when you have felt like a bird, have you used any of these or have you found that any of these techniques have been at all helpful for you? Well, because I do somewhat have slightly lower self-esteem, I guess I'll kind of talk about some of the ways they express that and see um, what ones I've done. Ruby positive affirmations and point out things you love about yourself. I mean, I know my strengths and weaknesses. Um, I have repeatedly tried telling myself that, hey, I know I'm a straight-A student. I know I'm good at this. I don't know if it works. I just do it, so. And this is something that, that Mommy and I try to do to kind of point out to you that, you know, because a lot of times the things that tend to bring you down are scholastic issues. Yeah. Which... You don't have, but you have this perception that you do. Yeah. So, you know, I think mommy and I are trying to provide that positive reinforcement of, okay, you got a 96, you didn't get a hundred. It's okay. You know? Um, and when, when we've had these discussions, you, you do seem to calm down and relax a little bit. You're not nearly as uptight. So I do think they do help. Yeah. I don't know if you doing it yourself is as effective. Yeah. Um, but I think with those around you providing you support, you're big on support. And I think our family, for the most part, tends to be very supportive, and that helps. Yeah. How about, you know, creating words of encouragement and reminders for yourself? Um, I've never really thought of that, and I've never really done it. So That, that might be something we have to give it a try and see if it works. Yeah. Uh, spend more time with the people who make you feel loved and appreciated. I do that. Well, you didn't have a choice during the pandemic. I mean, <laughs> mommy and daddy were here and you couldn't go anywhere. So <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, do the things you excel at. What do you excel at? Give me top three things that you excel at. Um, Art, probably any form mostly. Sure. Uh, I would say research. You do a fantastic job researching these podcasts. Yeah, research. Uh, let's see what else. Would gaming be something I'm good at? Absolutely. Okay. 
Those are all good things. And these are the things that, you know, maybe you need to do more of that. You, maybe you need to, you know, come up with more lists instead of stopping at three. Let's go to five next time. And then let's go to seven. And, you know, you keep hammering those home and you realize, you know, you're a pretty, you know, wonderful individual. Yeah. And like art's probably the biggest thing that I've done that I can relate to because whenever I draw or come up with a story or play some type of music, I always seem it's always like a way I'm like, oh, wow, I actually really like this. Like, right. I make an art piece I really like. I come up with a really cool idea for a story that I really like. I play a song really well. Yeah. Um, How about relationships? What do you do to improve or do you do anything to improve relationships? Um, I've been trying to talk with all my friends and, you know, trying to know, uh, keep up with them. Um, and... Um, that's one that's probably just the situational struggle at this point in time. But I think your involvement in marching band is significantly improving that and expanding that relationship pool by exposing you to, to more people that you can hang around with that have common interests. Yeah. Uh, the thing is I've actually started, uh, really connecting with one of the, uh, veterans, um, Gabe, uh, we've actually started talking a bit more and by the end of yesterday's practice he actually said that i was doing really well for um a rookie that's good so see and getting praise from yeah. someone who's been uh, you know with a program for a while now it's got to be uplifting yeah so there are things that you can do you know and and again for the, the listening audience out there if these techniques don't work and if you find that you're running into issues there's there's help out there there are you know we already gave the number for the uh, suicide prevention hotline you can you can definitely call there even if it's you know if you need help call they if they can't help you they can direct you to some place that can you have counselors at school that are qualified to help you you have uh, a family uh, um doctors that can put you in touch with people that can provide the help that you need. There are free services out there that you can call that are helplines that can help you. It's not difficult to find the help that you need these days. Uh, we're very fortunate in the time that we live in now where there is so much help that's out there. Mm -hmm. Just a few years ago, you might not have found nearly the kind of help that you have now, and it may have been a struggle to get it. Um, but you have to have the motivation to go out there. You know, you have to have the motivation to want to talk about it. And, and maybe you're not comfortable going to a professional. You have to find somebody that you trust. Is it a friend? Is it a loved one? Besides mom and daddy, who else would you talk to about issues? Probably some of my friends. Mariah probably being the main one since I've known her for the longest. Right. Um, and since she is around my age, I'd probably be the most comfortable talking to her about issues because maybe she's faced something similar. And a lot of times the way that you start a conversation like this, because a lot of people don't know how to, how to approach a conversation. Sometimes it might just be questions, you know, if you're feeling depressed, it might be, have you ever had, had a feeling where you're just overwhelmed with sadness for reasons that you don't understand? And that alone could be the icebreaker for you. You don't have to come out and say, hey, I'm I'm depressed. Uh, what can I do? It doesn't have to be something that direct. Yeah. But trying to understand how you feel, people do that, accomplish that best by asking questions and bouncing those questions off of someone else. That's, that's kind of how you start a, a conversation. You go back and forth. Because you never know. The interesting thing about that is the person that you're confiding in may have the same problems that you're running into too. They might be afraid to talk about it. And you starting that conversation with them may inadvertently be helping them deal with the problems that they're running into. Because everyone deals with these things. And that's that's the one thing I think we kind of need to emphasize here. You've dealt with feeling like a burden. I've dealt with feeling like a burden. Different age groups, different genders, different generations different circumstances entirely. 
So everybody goes through these things. Everyone has self-esteem issues at some point. Everyone feels depression. Don't think that you're the only person that goes through this. Everybody does at some point in time. They may have, the pe person you're talking to may have gone through it already and may be a good shoulder to lean on, may have some advice for you, may be going through it now, and you may be mutually benefiting each other by trying to talk about it. Um, don't ever feel isolated that, that this is the only thing, you're the only person that this is happening to because it happens to everybody. And you know, most people don't want to deal with it because society kind of you know, stigmatizes people. And it's less so these days than it has been in the past. Fortunately, you know, people have acknowledged the significance of mental health and, and you're less stigmatized in society today about it, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. You know, when I grew up as a teen, you didn't talk about these things. Um, you didn't talk about your feelings. You didn't, you weren't allowed to have feelings when you were a kid, not if you were a boy. You know, the, the gender roles were so clearly defined, you know, 30 years ago that you, you boys were tough and girls were the emotional ones. And, and if the two mixed, there was a problem. Um, so it was a very different world back then. And, and, to look back in hindsight now, it's kind of a relief to see that things have progressed as far as they have. That's not to say that we're where we need to be. Yeah. There's definitely room to maneuver. Yep. Do you find that any of the guys that you talk to or that the friends that you've had in school, are they more outgoing, more open about feelings and stuff? Or do you really not have those conversations? I sometimes have conversations with some of my younger friends, um, particularly Lindsay, whenever she does go through slightly more emotional states. Um, and I try to give her what I felt, um, what I learned on how I was feeling around the time I was her age and, right. you know, trying to help her out in the best way I can. Right. And, you know, that is what this podcast was designed to do. It was specifically for you with the hope that maybe we could help some other people out there with some of the things that we went over. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hopefully we're, we're helping people out. If people want to contact us, we'll, we'll be more than happy to listen, certainly confidentially, if people want to go that route. But, you know, if you need someone to talk to. I think we're fairly reasonable individuals here that, that would be happy to listen and at least listen. You know, yeah. I can't promise anything else. We're not professionals. We can't provide you professional help, but, um, you know, we're, we're certainly happy to listen. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to take our final break. We're going to come back uh, real quick. We'll get your closing thoughts and finish up with the podcast business. All righty. We'll be right back. Go for your closing remarks. All right. So to everyone out there, I just wanted to let everyone know that it's all right if you feel like a burden. Like we mentioned before, everyone goes through it. At Everyone can go through it at some point. There's always going to be a moment where everyone can go through questions of self, like low self-esteem, um, feelings of sadness or depression, and just know that you're not alone. And in a lot of cases, it's better to open up to people than keep than stay silent and keep it all closed off. Even if they don't, can't provide you with a solution, in a lot of cases, you don't really need a solution. A lot of times, you just need someone to list, that'll listen to you. Amen to that. Sage advice as always. Thank you. Before we go, I do want to invite folks to subscribe to the podcast once again. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of all of our podcasts can be found listed as Insights into Things. Any place you can get a podcast, basically. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, etc. Uh, we would also encourage you to write in, give us your thoughts, give us your suggestions for topics. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get high res versions of all of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream on Twitch five days a week. 
at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are a Amazon prime subscriber, you do get a monthly Twitch prime subscription. We'd love it to get through it our way. It helps us pay the bills. Audio versions of this podcast can be found on the web at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast or at instagram.com slash insights into things. Or you can get links to all those and more on our website at insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. Well done. And I think that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.